We are bringing you what the CPP is promising or proposing to Ghanaians. Yesterday, they launched their manifesto and they are number seven on the ballot. Their flag bearer, Nana Nkuma Nkuma, I'll give you the full name in a jiffy, was the one that read out what the CPP intends to do for Ghanaians. CPP is a political party that many of you already know about, that they have actually been in government before. But at the time, in the 50s, 60s, their presidential candidate was Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. After the 57 election, when we gained independence, he was president of the republic. And throughout the period, I mean, up until today, some of the key big issues that the country is enjoying was under the, 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 the period when um, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was president, including the most famous Kwame Nkrumah motorway, the Tema motorway, the uh, airport, I beg your pardon, the Tema harbor, and then also KNUST in Kumasi. So the party has, whilst in power, did some very significant things that we cannot underestimate or rule out of our political conversations. That's the Convention People's Party. The current crop of CPP leadership say that they have something different from what the NDC and MPP is promising. So she's saying that out of their manifesto, the key pillars they are focusing their attention on, if they do get the nod of the Ghanaian voter, is one, economic ownership and prosperity. They are promising that they are going to ensure they build the Ghanaian economy so much so that we own it and become prosperous on our own. Secondly, industrialization as the engine of change. Industrialization is very topical when you're, whenever you're talking about the Convention People's Party because a number of factories were built under the earlier CPP when the former president Kwame Nkrumah was in power. A number of factories and industries we have in Ghana, and many of you can attest to it, were built by him. It's been decimated, disintegrated. Most of it are not functioning anymore for a number of reasons. But at least at the time, the country was booming because people had jobs and there was a lot of money flowing within the Ghanaian economy. So they are hoping to bring back a more industrialized country. Also, women's empowerment and national resilience. This is uh, clearly obvious because even the flag bearer is a woman and she's saying that when they do get the nod, they're going to do a lot more women empowerment and ensure that there is national resilience. And the national resilience is uh, hovering on the subject of how Ghana can be a lot more independent or our independence will be more meaningful than being independent by then being dependent on other countries for aid and assistance. Then finally, there's governance at your doorstep is what they are promising. Where governance at your doorstep would mean they're going to run a kind of governance that will be easy for you to, or the, the, the governance structure will be very easily accessible to every Ghanaian and will be at every nook and cranny. So these are the key pillars the CPP is promising if they do get the nod from Ghanaians. So let's go and bring you what exactly um, uh, the, the CPP flag bearer has been saying now, you know, they have made bold promises to Ghanaians and uh, saying that 20,000 Ghana cities will be given to every citizen. No, ho hold on. You need to pay particular attention to this. The CPP is promising to give every Ghanaian aged 18 years and above 20,000 Ghana cities if they do win the election. And they said this at the launch of the party's uh, women-centric manifesto which was launched in Accra. The flag bearer, Akosia Frimpoma Sapong Kumankuma, spoke to the media and talked about how they hope to revive the ideals of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Ghana's first president. Let's listen to her. It's yes and they say, yes, conversion post party. Because we love people and we think about people, we are saying that we are going to build the industries. But each industry that is going to be built, will be owned by some group of people who want to be part of that industry. Everybody is going to have an allocation of 20,000 Ghana cities. That is what we need by Ghana bashers. 20 million people, 20 million people from age 18 and up, even if you are 120, it won't matter. Whether you are blind, deaf, sane, can work, can't work, you have access. And because you have access, you will have owned the Commander Sugar Faction. With the 20,000, it means that about 30,000 Ghanaians 
would have had to put their money in the commander sugar factory. Gentlemen, tell me how, you knowing that it's your money is there, would you allow the sugar factory to have been there for 20, 20 years? Listen, I am standing here as Convention People's Party leader because I want you to own Ghana. I want you to be able to have ownership of your life your family, and take care of them. You must have businesses that are yours. Your businesses today are being taken over by foreign firms. You are standing there right in front of your eyes. Ghana is slipping from you. Ghana is slipping from all of you right here now. Ghana.